so you're awake. Don't try to move. I had to restrain you. You were in pretty bad shape when I found you, so I want you to start making any backwards progress. Things are things are progressing. You're starting to heal. Yeah, I guess, I guess you deserve an explanation. Mm -hmm. Let me put my stuff away. as it exists today, but I'll tell you about it. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I found you off the I-45. Looks like your car had done a couple of flips, maybe three. You were unconscious. I couldn't tell, but I thought that maybe your legs were broken. Maybe your back was broken. I, I, I didn't know. So I made a stretcher, moved you as carefully as I could, brought you to uh, this little piece of paradise. I realize it doesn't look like much, but you must have known you were driving so fast that you were driving away from something. And uh, in a couple of days you've been out, it's become clear what that is. I guess maybe clear is not the word. It's become clear that it's one of a few things. Mm. And I can tell you from what I've seen, uh, from what I've experienced over the past week, um, I can vouch for, you know, maybe it's not just one of those things. Maybe it's a couple of them. One thing, the aliens came. <sighs> Plopped right down. I saw, I was out there just now. I saw an alien the size of a, of a house. It was wearing, it was wearing cars as shoes. Like it stuck its feet to a couple of cars, and it was, it was walking on cars like like they were roller skates, but they weren't rolling. Yeah, you know, those who say it started when uh, Trump fired Robert Mueller. the revolution, the chaos in the streets, and maybe that's what attracted the attention of our uh, extraterrestrial nemeses. They came over and well, maybe they thought they were breaking up a bar fight or something, but bottom line is we're, we're all suffering now because of it. You definitely took the brunt of it. I've been uh, tending your wounds. And it looks like you could use some fresh bandages. So why don't I go ahead and get you set up with that. I know it's a bit cold out here. Space here just doesn't quite. 
trick. Do the trick for this whole. It's not a bunker, it's a bunk ground. Sort of like a bunker. So yeah, you were bleeding a whole lot and it's word you might not make it for a little while there. But miracle of miracles. Here you are. You in pain? Yeah. Thought you might be have a few shots of morphine. Happy to give you one of them. Get this open. Enough, it's easier to do without the rubber gloves, but that's gonna sting for a second, but then you're gonna feel a lot better, trust me. There you go. Feel it? Yeah, like a warmth. Helps against the cold too. I mean, doesn't actually raise your core temperature or anything, but kind of feels like it does. Now, if things get bad, I do have uh, some sterile surgical implements, but uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Like I said, I set set your bones, took care of your, your major cuts, and uh, there were a couple that required stitches. They're still in, but I think right now I just need to change your bandages and you'll be fine. So I'm just going to cut away the bandages you got and then I'll replace them. Alright, you okay? I'm just getting under your arm there. Oh, that's not bad. Actually, looks looks pretty good, but it does need changing. Let's get over here. A little worse, but look, <laughs> they both look pretty good, all things considered. So, I'm not going to remove your restraints yet because you could just mess them all up again. I'm just gonna. And wrap this right around there.
around there. In point of fact, I was not a surgeon, but I did do some veterinary work. Which, uh, all told, ended up being a good thing. Yeah, so as you probably noticed, my no, it's not cutting very well, is it? My bunker isn't well stocked, and I got to end up going foraging. There's uh, there's areas where there's this gas, this kind of like swamp gas. It comes out of the. comes out of the ground, I don't know, some kind of outgassing from something, but I couldn't tell you what. People inhale that gas and they get sick and they die. So, even if you were mobile, you shouldn't be going outside anyway. I think maybe a couple of days, a couple of days here, um, you'll be good to get back, get back out there and, uh, I don't know, maybe we can, we can, we can start a team, we can start kind of looking for others, see who survived and, and who hasn't, because I don't have, I don't have a clue. Um, I haven't seen anybody. I saw some graffitied alive in Tucson uh, on a billboard. Uh, but I was on the 45 near where I found you, but uh, Tucson's a long way away, so I'm not headed there anytime soon. Maybe there's little, I don't know, little sex of people who have found each other, congregated. I don't have a shortwave radio. I don't have a way of monitoring any of that stuff. That's what I should have done. Maybe if you think of it, you know, should have done things prior to this, whatever this event is. I should have done things that were more useful to survival, but I didn't. I do, I do have a few things, you know, I managed to forge a few things. Um, so you, you're you're safe here, and that's what's important. You're safe. You can rest for a while, and uh, I'll come check on you. And see if I can get you some food. It's going to be important. So, uh, but for now, I think you need to sleep a little bit. Um, probably going to go back out there see what uh, see what I can see. See what I can recover, and then I'll come back and check on you. Okay. All right, you take care. By the way, what's your name? Hmm. I had a hamster with that name. Yeah, didn't last long. So, hopefully, you are have a higher constitution than your typical hamster. I mean, obviously you do. Or you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have made it this far so <laughs> all right I'm gonna come back and check on you don't go nowhere <laughs> not give a choice really but I'm a good guy I'm telling you I'm <laughs> I'm here to help I promise all right I'll be back
Good, I'll give you another one of those shots when I get back. I'll give myself one too. You up again? I don't mind telling you that was a bit of a waste of time. on the on the food front but, uh, something else occurred to me that almost as important as food is uh, nourishment for your soul well, don't want to leave a morphine needle lying around here do you so I have something your box. And it contains things that uh, are balms for your psyche. Uh, now I'm not any kind of weirdo sort of chakra yoga Dharma, whatever they call them. I, I don't know anything about that. You know, I never took a yoga class in my life. Uh, but I do know that sometimes conventional medicine is not the only medicine. And so since I was unsuccessful in finding you the proper nourishment uh, for your stomach, I figured the least I could do is try and uh, get you some nourishment for your soul. So before for the change, they called this autonomous sensory meridian response. Yeah, you know what? I, I hear cars too, but 
tell you what the aliens now sometimes they use cars for shoes and if they find like a big enough truck like an f-150 or something like that they can still actually use them you know like roller skates and basically they're driving around got one foot in each bed of a pickup truck and they're going 80 miles an hour down the freeway uh, and they see you you're screwed so this is T you're probably saying that that's a food not much of a food. Once you eat it, it's gone. If you do this, it lasts forever. So I'm choosing to do this. Because I think this will help you more at this particular juncture than were I to boil it in a pot of water. And I actually, you know, maybe, maybe later, but I do have a, I do have a burner, you know, iron skillet. I ain't got nothing to put in it. I make tea in an iron skillet. That's, Really, the most important thing for you right now, you know, because I can't just keep giving you morphine. So you just relax. And trust me. You don't trust me. We don't establish a sort of bond of trust with each other. Neither of us, we're, we're not going to get anywhere. I'm not, I'm not saying uh, I love you. Well, m maybe I do. I'm not, I, don't, I don't know who's to say. I'm sure you're, I don't know you that well. I only know you from staring at you while you sleep. I'm sure you're a wonderful person when you're conscious and mobile and have free will. You don't right now, I and mean, you will eventually, you know, if I permit it, of course, which of course I'm gonna permit it. Don't get your whatever it is in a bunch. And we're on the same team. We're humans, right? That's, that's, where, the, that's where the dividing line is now. There's humans. And there's things using F-150s as roller skates. And there's, I forgot to wear my gas mask out, didn't I? It's a good thing I didn't come across any of those, uh, what did I call them? They're bad, it's like gas, gas. I'm not talking about like, what kind of gas that Talking about the kind of gas that kills you dead. Like, you know, uh, oh, I can tell you exactly what kind of gas I'm talking about. Put this down right here. I'll be right back. I found this. What do you think this is? What do you think? Does that look like something that's a, a good for you? Hmm. Kind of defused gas emitting bomb or I don't, I don't know what it is, but like it's not it's not a cure for cancer. I can tell you that much. I got 
protection. Protection, this is for both of us. Okay. Before, a couple weeks ago, people were talking about you know, taking away guns from people. Good thing they didn't do it, because now we really need them. Now I'll admit, I, I fired this gun at one of those aliens, and it didn't seem to, uh, what? Maybe it was hurt, but it just kind of seemed more like it was pissed off. And unfortunately, you know, I, I don't have any high caliber weapons. Just these little low caliber, these are 380s. And you make such a sweet tapping sound. The bullets can be relaxing. It's not the guns don't kill people. Bull bullets don't kill people. The, when the bullet going in you doesn't kill people, your if your heart stops beating, that's what kills you. So. Stop. You know, stop blaming the, the guns and start blaming your heart. You know, do I have a shotgun back there, you know. Um, but that's mostly I'm I mean I'm trying I'm hunting. You know, if I had me one of those AR fifteens, oh boy. Whew. And a bump stock? Oh, give me, give me a bump stock, because I like to fire lots of, I like to fire, I like to fire like a hundred shots, a couple hundred shots a minute, um, when I'm hunting rabbit, because my aim's not so good, so I really gotta, I really gotta pepper the ground, and So, you know, all you liberal, libtard snowflakes, look at the world we have now. Trump destroyed the Mueller investigation. Uh, there was chaos in D.C., chaos across America. And... Basically, like our, our parents, our extraterrestrial parents came and were like, hey, cut that crap out. You know, it's time for, you know, Papa E.T. and, and uh, Mama Xenomorph to, to come on down and, 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 and re -in instill some order. But we'll, I'll tell you, one thing we didn't get was, you're talking about aliens, we missed scale, right? Like, when people think about aliens, they're like, oh, well, they're probably going to be about our size, a little bigger than us, maybe. We were wrong. We were wrong. They are like 50 feet tall. Yeah. Kind of makes it easier to hide in a way, you know. But once they find you, you know, you're kind of screwed. So, this is a, a Smith & Wesson five shot revolver so you only get five shots with this you gotta you gotta pace yourself you gotta be measured calm but it will never backfire it will never jam as long as you take care of it yeah. and, and it's pretty I mean, I think it's pretty. So, so we're, you don't have to worry. So we're, this is more, I mean, they're going to protect us against looters. Unless the looters have bigger guns than we do. In which case, this might make things worse. But let's, let's, you know what, I'm, I don't, I'm tired of talking about guns right now. Let, let me, I'm going to go put this back. I feel like what we need more of is more, 
Need more morphine. That's what we need. Hope you don't mind. I'm, I'm gonna split this one with you, and then we can uh, uh, go back to our, our balm for the soul. But why they make these things so hard to open? What? The thing is, when you need morphine, this, there's never like a. There we go. There's never like a time where it's like, well, kind of maybe need some morphine in the next couple hours. It's like when you need morphine, you need it like right then, right? So they shouldn't make it so difficult to, to get these things out because. I mean, that's just, just a pain. All right, now I hope you don't mind. I'm, I'm going I'm to give myself half. Give you half. I don't really know where you've been. I know where I've been, so I'm going to give myself half first. And then, then I'll give you half. Half, maybe, maybe two-thirds. Give, me, give myself two-thirds there. All right. I'll give you the rest. Right there in your neck. That's the best place to put it, in your neck. And then, actually, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Let's do this. Hold out here, I know. There we got our tea. And we got our, our big box of big box of goodies. Let's see what else we got in here. What right, we got? We got this real old uh, oil canteen. It makes it. some like antibiotic in here and then I could you know just kind of administer antibiotics at the same time as I'm administering ASMR. So hopefully between the ASMR, the feeling of security that I, that I hope you get from the gun the morphine, hopefully between all those things, you are starting to feel relaxed. Okay. I feel like we're building a rapport, you and I. I feel like, I feel like things are going well. I think Maybe, you know, like once you're back up and running, we could be like best friends. It's hard to find, it's hard to find good friends once you reach a certain age. I'm well past that age. Right? I <laughs> know, right? It's like, what the, what the heck? Who'd have thunk it? It's amazing times we live in. Amazing times. Over oh, here. I have this old camera. And if you don't mind, I would like to take a few pictures of your wounds. Kind of document their progress. I already took some of them before. Uh, but a few more now.
I didn't even, I didn't even focus that time. I don't know what I was thinking. Focus it. It's pretty good. I mean, apart from the scientific value of documenting the progress of healing of wounds, let's it say it's been ASMR. This is this is a, a camera of ASMR. It serves a dual purpose. You want your face there? Okay. You want one of the room? I don't know if that was in focus or not, but I got to use up the roll. Got to use up the whole roll because yeah, I forgot. I mean, you can't develop can't develop film anymore, but uh, I bet you I could find some place to find a dark room, do it myself. Can't be that hard. Can't be that hard. It's got darn easy, I guess. What else I got here? I got one of these fidget cubes. Everybody loves these. Possibly the greatest thing ever invented. You know what's funny is I've never I never actually uh, used one of these for their intended purpose. Like I don't, I never carried one of these with me and then, you know, used it when I wasn't feeling great or starting to feel anxious. I feel anxious a lot. It's worse now, obviously. And now, where do you go? I feel anxious. Where do you go? You go to the medicine cabinet, get some morphine. That's where you go. <laughs> oh, that's, now that is... Oh, I love it. Seriously, if it weren't for the fact that the world were ending, I would. Uh, I would be so happy right now. I got, I got a friend. I got. I don't really have that many spots. I, I got some. I got this box. I mean, have you looked at this box? Have I, I don't know if I've shown you. Like, this box is is something else. I found it. I don't really know where it came from or. Or what it was before I found it, but it's like got all these little like little places to put things and cubbies and you know it's got this kind of it's hard to see. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's like a triangle on the on the top there. And I'll tell you what else is heavy. It's a heavy box. Even empty. It's heavy. Hard to imagine. You pick up this box, you can't tell if it's got something in it or not, because it's so kind of heavy by its nature that you know, whatever, whatever you put it in is a, a insignificant weight. And of course, I did find a little living frog out there. He was hopping around. So, this is when you talk about scale, right? Like, those aliens, I don't know, are they 50, 60 feet tall, maybe? Uh, you know, it depends. Uh, I, I don't know what it depends on. I don't know if there's, I don't even know if they have gender, you know. It doesn't matter if they do. But frogs, cockroaches and frogs. That's what's going to be left if we're not careful. I'm just saying, we, we bond together. You know, you heal up. Once you heal up, you and me, we use this as our, our base of operations, right? And, uh, what we do is, is we start here, we secure this, 
it's pretty secure already every time. Um, and we go from door to door, uh, mostly looking for morphine, but also looking for more places like this and, and, and food and stuff like that. Because food's important. Food's important. And we get that food. And if there's people, we, we don't steal food from people. We steal food from aliens. But I don't know what aliens eat. I haven't seen them eat people. They might. But whatever it is the aliens eat, they gotta eat something. Everybody, they, I wonder, I wonder how alien reacts to ASMR. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out again tonight. And maybe I'll find one of them. Maybe I'll bring, I'll bring this here frog with me. See if I can get the alien to react favorably to a little bit of, a little bit of ASMR. Huh? Yeah. All right. All right, so you okay? We okay? We're, we're buddies? Yeah. Oh, this is great. This is great. Been so long since I've had a friend. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some more foraging. I am insisting, I am going to find us some food. That is gonna, that's gonna happen. And then we'll have ourselves a good old, good old breakfast and uh, see what happens. And until then, like that, I realize I took two thirds of the morphine, but I'm a little more used to it than you are. So maybe you maybe sleep for a little while and uh, you know, when you wake up, you know, it'll be, it'll be a, who knows, maybe I'll find some filet mignons or who knows what I could find. I'm gonna bring my shotgun, I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and uh, perform ASMR on an alien. I'm gonna, I'll report back to you, I'll let you know how that goes. I have a feeling, I feel it's gonna go real good. <laughs> that's my, that's my gut. My gut is almost never wrong. Almost never. I don't like that look you just gave me because my gut is almost never wrong and that's the truth. I pretty much predicted this exact scenario. So, you know, try to remember your benefactor here. Moi, c'est moi. Right? Hey, what about me? I'm just a... I'm just a little frog, and I'm, and I'm just kind of happy that I'm still alive and getting massages from this nice person here. Hey, Pepe the frog loves me too. Yeah. No. I'm not gonna try and kiss you. Don't don't worry about it. You know that'll that'll come naturally when when you're ready. It's time for me to go track down an alien and do some ASMR on an alien. Alien, alien sensory meridian <laughs> response, right? <laughs> what do you think? You think that's a good idea, right? That's my gut. That's my gut. Don't talk crap about my gut, okay? All right, I'm going to put this, put this away. You stay there. You sleep. And, uh... We'll see what happens. See, what, see how it goes. I'm gonna come back and report. Report back to you. I like this. It was fun.
Did you go to sleep? So, um, it's good news and some bad news. The bad news is that aliens don't like ASMR, like, at all. Not even a little tiny bit. I, I think they hate it. Um, good news is I, I found... I found some eggs. I have my little hot plate here. I'm in a, I'm in a lot of pain. Um, but, but I got some butter. And we got some eggs. And this, this is going to be good. Oh boy. Look at that. Look at that go. That is just asking for an egg right there. Stuff. I don't. I don't really have a spatula, but I had this knife. It's a good thing I had the knife. I think it's the only reason I got away from the aliens. Um, they seemed to. They seem to enjoy toying with humans, and that is what they did to me. So there's there's like a wow, there's like five or six more eggs in there. So we got enough eggs to last. If I, I just broke a yolk, that's right. It's fine. So I hope you like your eggs sunny side up and let's just these look about good to me. Turn this off. Serve that up. A little bit of scramble going on there. Eggs. So what's for uh, breakfast and dinner? So it's like middle of the night now. You you keep sleep, seem to be sleeping through the days, which is fine. Okay. So. What do you say we chow down on these eggs? Huh? Let's wait for them to cool off a bit because, you know, it's. The thing about an iron skillet, you know, they're practically indestructible, but they're also. They get very hot. And I'm sorry if I seem a little out of it. I help myself to a little more of the stuff in the cabinet because the. the Aliens almost tore my face off. And Pepe. I don't know if you've seen Pepe again. I should have a service for him. He's 
a small small memorial. I don't want to I don't want to lead anybody to us, but okay. Why don't we could figure all that out after we eat? Let's eat up. Hmm. That's still too hot. Still too hot. Let's let it sit there for a minute. Sit right there. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. some of these got some surgical tools here we could, we could probably you know, eat with those Ooh, nice uh, this, I mean these are essentially just you know tongs right here and a sterile it's good you have some you have a bite a bite that's good it tastes good right that's right. You drop a little, but you got most of it. Yeah. One more. One more. The, the yolk, I mean, I know they say the yolk is, is bad for you, but at this particular point in time, I think, you know, you probably want to just have as much, um, have as much uh, fat and cholesterol as you can get. So, you know, now is not the time to be worrying about your, your lipid profile. Uh, I don't know if it is. That's a good looking piece. You on that piece? You look good? You like that? It's right there. There you go. Huh? Hey, you got an appetite. That's good. Now here, look at this. This is all... This is all... Um, I was going to say placenta. This is all egg white. So this is... A, this is this is the part that you know they say is traditionally is, is good for you. So, you go ahead. Good, good. Is that a little hot? A little hot. Don't, well, don't. Okay, that's all right. We'll cool it off a little bit. Cool. Put that, you got some on the floor now. I mean, I realize we got a bunch of these eggs, but we don't want to go wasting them. Yeah. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Okay. Another, another little piece. This one's mostly yolk. Here comes the airplane. It came one of the planes that came out of the sky after the revolution, and then the aliens were coming. Choo choo. It sounds like a train, but it's it's a it's a plane, and I don't know. What sort of force it uses to to move? And you don't want to eat too much because you know if you eat a lot after going. Uh, hold on a second. Excuse me. Got to be careful. Don't know who that could be. That was a close one. That was uh, somebody who was attracted by the smell of our eggs, wanted to take our, our dinner. It was a, like a zombie creature, but I, I scared it off. No big problem there. So, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm feeling a little lightheaded uh, because of blood loss. Um, so you, you just ate, so why don't you rest some more, 
And uh, I'm going to sit down for a little while and then I'm going to do a little more foraging for us. And uh, we'll see how, how we both feel um, in a little while, okay? All right, buddy. You got a little egg on your, on your lip there. You know, huh? Kind of gross. Yeah, and you gotta be careful. I mean, we can have some more eggs later if you like. Or we'll just step out of the way here. And we're just gonna we're gonna deal with this stuff as it comes. You know. Oh boy. can't believe it. He promised me he wasn't going to do this again. It's going to be okay. I can get you out of this. But you can't tell him that we spoke. Okay? It's going to be okay. I found this here. Um, I don't know what this is. I guess it's a it's a bat. It looks like it's covered in uh, guts or something gross. But, uh, I found it lying in the middle of this. There's like a fenced-in area. It looked like it was all like abandoned. There was a bunch of uh, you know, I see bodies, you know, bodies. And I found this bat. This thing looks like you know a lot of a lot of survival is just um, intimidation. You know, like I don't know if this bat could do any more damage than like a regular bat, but it sure looks like it could do a lot more damage, right? Uh, this is a bad looking mamma jamma. I like it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna keep it. Mm. So how are you feeling? You feeling better? You look you look a little better, you seem a little more a little a little more of a spring in your step, yeah. Me it was the eggs. Eating eating always helps, obviously. Eating is Good and you know, and the, the ASMR for your soul and your the eggs for your stomach and uh, me for your guardianship and mental protection make you feel like you know you're someone's really gonna be looking out for you and have your best interests at heart and and that's me. That's I've always been that kind of person. It's always 
ever since I was a kid. Just always, you know, I had an older brother, and um, even though he was older than I was, he was smaller than I was. And I'm not a big guy, but, but you know, he had some something happen, you know, before he came home. He had some kind of issue, and uh, so he was always smaller than I was. But, uh, you know, so I protected him, and you know. I'm sure he protected me too, you know, in a way. I mean, he taught me to be a protective per. This, pol the police. Oh. Did. I just wanted a friend. At least could you tell him that I was, I was good to you. <laughs>